Hi everyone, I'm James Nelson, Vice Chairman at Cushman and Wakefield, and I'm here to bring you the Nelson Reports video podcast for April 2016. I'm here with Jonathan Miller, who's President and CEO of Miller Samuel, a leading New York City appraisal and consulting firm. So Jonathan, thanks so much for coming in today. No, it's great to be here. Great. You know, there's a lot of talk right now about what's going on in the residential market yes. and certainly how it affects what's going on in the commercial market. And, and I know that, especially residential pricing, it just really seems to affect the psychology of the overall market. And sure. you're, you're really the, the doctor <laughs> in this department. So tell us, before we get into future projections, tell us what's actually happened up until now. Because one of the, the recent charts that you prepared showed that New York City condo and co-op pricing looks like it's still peaking. Are we at all-time highs still at this level? We are at all-time highs, but when you look under the hood, there's a couple of reasons for it that aren't necessarily because we're you know, uh, reflective of the moment right now. So for example, the resale market uh, prices are really um, rising because there's a chronic shortage of supply. And that's almost mutually exclusive from the new development phenomenon of super luxury. The super luxury market, that stuff went to contract a year, year and a half ago, and really is starting to close now as the buildings are being completed. So it's skewing the aggregate, the overall number is much higher. So for example, in Manhattan, this in the, the end of last year, we had a, a median sale price all-time record. It was the first time we actually surpassed the pre Lehman record. But part of that is because of the new development closing activity, not the contracts. Mm -hmm. So if you had to estimate, and I'm sure you have the exact number at your fingertips, <laughs> but what is the average price per square foot where apartments are trading for today, both resale and then new construction in Manhattan? Well, so uh, because uh, there's a lot of skew caused by the new product, so we're really looking on a new development side around 2,200 a foot on average, uh, but it's been ramping up as these new development closes are coming in. Of course, it's not uncommon if you're if you go to the top five percent of the market, you're really looking at you know 3,500 a foot, you know over th well over 3,000 a foot. On the resale market, you're looking at you know, uh, somewhere in the 15, 16, 1700 foot range. Right, which is still historically fantastic. I, kn I know when we're trying to sell land and developers say, well, look, I, I think that this maybe blends at 2000 at best. That's still a, a great number, all, all things considered. But, but again, I, I think to your point, it really has to do with kind of the size of the units and, and then the ticket price. Yeah, I mean, in, in New York, for example, one of the, the big characteristics of this latest new development wave has been size. It's been the larger, the better because of the premium for larger contiguous space that is is driving a higher price per foot for larger spaces. The problem that we have now in the new development cycle is you can't build everything extremely large because that market is very small. For example, you had mentioned sort of this 10 million and up. That's 1% of the market. That is not a large segment of the market. So you can't build all this product coming in can't be targeted at that one narrow uh, price point, which is really what it has. Uh, one of the biggest sort of discussion points, I think, about this new development boom um, of the last four or five years, it's not about the number of units. It's about the price bandwidth that they were targeted to. Sort of everybody's operating in their own silo and not seeing their neighbors build right next to them. And now with a much more visceral horizon where you can see towers everywhere, consumers are starting to pull back a little bit for and many other reasons but because there's competition and the sense of urgency isn't quite there. So it definitely sounds a little bit like too much of a, a good thing with these ultra high-end uh, apartments and, and we apologize if we had our part in that and driving up the land prices. Because, <laughs> hey, you're just doing your job. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're selling land for $800, 1000 a buildable, you have to sell condos at $2,500 a, and a I think foot to make it work. I agree and I think land is really the underlying reason for this new development boom only because we just came off of the biggest housing boom of the modern era. The low hanging fruit has already been picked over. The product uh, type that we're building now, now we have uh, versus the last cycle, you can build a much smaller footprint, much taller. You have the international component to it. And, and it's, it, it's sort of, um, it's targeted at a very specific product 
-hmm. that is that is we're, we're sort of in this mode right now we're not quite building what the market is demanding right and and it's driven by land prices if and I think that that's how this whole thing is going to play out the people that bought land earlier in the cycle have much more wiggle room to adjust pricing uh, because if you think about a product that comes on today the pricing was set two years ago well the market pricing for new development is not the same as it was when it was pro forma two years ago it's it there's a settling and that and that's going to be how this plays out the, the lower you paid for land the more you're going to be able to wiggle around and find and adjust your pricing to sell one other point i don't want to beat this to death but it it's not um i think when we talk about a slowdown i think in real estate we tend to be very linear when it slows down it, it doesn't only really slow down it's just zero there's no demand it, you know and it, it's it's not an on off switch it's it, you know in, in that in that sense um we we're seeing when developers are adjusting prices there's a rapid uptick in 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 uh, sales activity so i think that's an important component to sort of frame the story of what's actually happening right and we've even seen some bulk sales which we've been involved with where you're clearing out uh, a bunch of the inventory so uh, I, i'd love to talk about pipeline because that's one of the toughest things to track sure. and first i read about reports in brooklyn they had twenty thousand units in the pipeline almost all rental then i heard a report the other day that it was thirty five thousand sure um I, I know that you focus a lot in manhattan but you know Tell us a little bit about the pipeline, how much of it is rental and how much uh, of it's condo, and then we can talk about the absorption and what it's going to take to to, um, to fill these apartments. Sure. I, I think in Brooklyn, it, it's interesting because, you know, we're hearing, I remember six months ago, the number was sort of in the you know low 20s in terms of rental pipeline, and now we're hearing it's over 30 uh, or seeing it's over 30. The, the actual number of units is not the problem. Uh, th that's not, you know, given the fact that New York City's population growth is five years ahead of trend, we're seeing record employment. Uh, we have the most number of employees in the history of New York City, but all the rental product for the most part, because the land prices are, are skewed to luxury product. You're, you're not gonna now run for mayor under the slogan, <laughs> the rent is too damn high. I, I think that's already been taken. <laughs> I'm not, I, believe me, I'm not, but you know, being pragmatic, it's not the number of units. It's that they're they're they they are skewed to the upper end of the market. So what's happening, for example, in the rental market, whether you're talking about Brooklyn or Manhattan, is the top of the market, the luxury market, the top 10, 20 percent of the market, rents aren't trending up. In the best cases, they're flat, and and in many cases, they're either slipping or we're seeing record use. Uh, of the uh, landlord concessions. Uh, yeah, I was just going to add that. I mean, when you add in the, the broker's fee, if owner pays one or two months free rent, when you look at the effect of rent, it makes a pretty big difference. But it seems like all the rental that's been built in Brooklyn, for the most part, I mean, they're looking for, you know, $60 a foot rent. So the, the question numbers. is, you know, how deep is that, especially once the L train goes down, you know, what's going to happen? I mean, I, you know, the play now might be to invest in other boroughs that might get a, a bump from that. But, you know, Without a 421A, I don't even know how you build rental right now. And so maybe that's the good news is that we've got this huge pipeline, but maybe three, four, five years out. I mean, we're not selling land oh, no. right now for rental. So right. we, we just need to get through this chunk. But you, um, have to, you have to have land prices settle back down to be able to see more of that type of product enter the market. And also, too, you have to absorb what you've already built. So right. I, I would think, you know, as a general comment, what you see in, when you break down rents, borough wide for say Brooklyn, you're seeing soft at the top, very strong at the bottom, but we're start or in the middle, but you're starting to see the growth slow even in the lower end because of affordability. You know, one of the characteristics of this development boom is this outward radial push of the consumers of these, you know, these developments. They're pushing further and further out. So what's happening now is we're seeing record sales activity in Westchester, in Fairfield County. Really? And in uh, Nassau and all of Long Island, with the exception, you know, uh, excluding the Hamptons as a sort of a different animal, the suburban markets are benefiting. They're not seeing big price growth, but they're seeing a big uptick in sales. And it's not a zero sum game, it doesn't come at the loss of the city. Think of the city as this bucket of water that's sort of the water spilling over the top. There's nowhere for these people to go that are looking for affordability, um, still want to be, you know, work in the city or whatever. You're seeing the suburbs start to benefit from this.
Got it. So what, one last question, again, and going back to this ultra high-end market, because it seems to get the, the bulk of the airtime. So when it, I look- It's 1% of the market and 99% of the airtime. That's correct. Air well, it, it's the, the, uh, the flashiest out there. It gets people excited. Sure. But the, you know, if, if you look at your charts, when you look at $10 million plus segment, you're saying a three-year supply. But then when we were talking before, you said, well, that's because the resales are actually bringing that absorption time down. You're saying for new construction, 10 million plus, it might take five years to get through this? Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, sort of, what I'm saying is that if you look at all new development, which is generally you know, heavily filled north of three to four million dollars, there's certainly product less than that but you know th that's been the development focus the overall um, a product that's coming through the pipeline is a little over five years between four and six depending how you match it up but it skews much longer as you move up in price because it's it's a narrower tail it's very very small that as I said the 10 million and up I, I remember a CEO of a real estate company said a few years ago how many 10 million dollar buyers are there well you know apparently we thought it was an endless supply it's certainly deeper than it's ever been just because of the the, the growth of wealth worldwide and especially in New York City but it is an infinite and I think we're hitting that sat we've hit that saturation point probably a year ago and now everybody is starting to realize this and some mid development are making changes but also they're um, they're you know it may end up resulting in future projects just not being built right well fair enough well thanks again for coming in uh, really appreciate it my pleasure okay